All right, so we are recording. So whoever's listening to this, um, I guess I got to say my name first. My name is Eric Dial. I'm the head varsity baseball coach at Mendham High School, and I'm here with Connor Byrne. Connor, say hi. What's going on? Brendan, and I'm here with Brendan Callanan. Brendan, say hi. How's it going? All right. So um, I'll get into why we're doing this in a little bit, but before I get into that and we actually start to have a conversation, I'm going to embarrass these guys a little bit by talking okay. about what they accomplished in their high school career so far. Um, and they, they just have to sit there and listen to me talk about how good they are. So we'll start with you, Connor. Connor is a Siena commit. And when did you commit there? Do you remember the day, the date? October 26th of last year. October 26th of last year, Connor committed to Siena. So last year as a junior, Connor on the mound, and this is all according to NJ.com. So if it's wrong, it's not my fault. It's your coach's fault. And I can bust his chops about it because I'm friends with him. Um, oh, yes. So it's 1.38 ERA, 61 innings pitched, 39 hits, 17 runs, 12 earned runs, 26 walks, and 81 strikeouts. And he was also on the mound when Ridge, who Connor pitches for, beat Rutgers Prep for the Somerset County Tournament title. On the mound that day, uh, Connor threw seven innings, gave up two hits, no runs, one walk, and 11 strikeouts. In one absolute bomb. One absolute bomb. Okay, oh. so... Which still, I guess it's landing just now. But anyway, just um, so so that's Connor. Connor, can you tell us? Uh, I didn't. What I didn't research before this was, can you tell us about any sort of accolades, like all county, all conference? What did you get in terms of that? Uh, I think I was all. Uh, we didn't do all county. We don't do all county. Right? We don't do all county anymore. All I'm showing my age. Yeah. I was all conference. Uh, I think first team. Uh, and I was all group second team, and then I got I got think if it comes back to me, it comes back to me. Cool. Uh, all right, so that's so that's Connor. So now we'll go to Brendan. Uh, Brendan is a, is an Iona commit. Brendan, when did you officially commit to Iona? April nineteenth, I want to say April twentieth. April nineteenth or April twentieth. Okay, so Brendan on the mound last year had a 2.03 ERA, 41 in the third innings pitch, 34 hits, 14 runs, 12 earned runs, 10 walks, and 30 strikeouts. As a hitter last year, so he's been on varsity for two years. Both of these guys have experience as sophomores on the varsity level, but we're just talking about their junior years. As a hitter, as a junior, he was 25 for 74 with 27 run scores, 22 run scored, 22 RBIs, 20 singles, three doubles, a triple, a home run, 16 RBIs. So that's a 338 batting average with a 446 slugging percentage. So welcome, guys. So that's Connor and that's Brendan. And the reason why we're here is because Connor and Brendan and I have been working together. Uh, I've been lucky enough to be their pitching instructor since they were, what was it, 10 years old, guys? Nine, I, I, I think my first lesson with you was like nine. Nine yeah, years. I think I was a year after, after so I was 10. 10, right? So, innings. what's that, uh, Connor? At extra innings. At extra innings, that's right. Mm -hmm. And Brendan was at extra innings as well, and then locked in in 2015. So, yeah. um, we've been working together since you guys were 9 and 10 years old. And I brought you here because this is kind of like the culmination of us working together. And unfortunately, when you go to college, I probably won't see you as often, which I'm sad about, but it's just kind of the natural course of the way things work. Um, so it's number one, just to talk to you guys and see where you're at and get your thoughts on what got you to where you are. And then number two is I feel like you guys are the epitome of what I would want any high school baseball player to be, not only from a talent perspective, talent's God given, you can only do so much in terms of talent, but um, you are the epitome of what I would want for a high school baseball player with the type of instruction that you've received. But I think more so and more importantly, your ability to kind of go out and, and, and do work on your own and be curious enough to ask questions and then figure out things that work for you to make you the best baseball player you can be. So that is why we're here today. Good so far, guys. You ready to start talking? Yeah. All right. Um, so, Connor, we'll start with you. When did you start playing baseball? How old were you? 
four or five years old. That's when they had like the like the T ball. It was, it was like the yeah. Brendan, same for you, four or five? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, same for me. me. Gotcha. And you guys were Connor, you were nine years old when you started taking lessons, and Brendan, you were 10. Do you do you recall when when did baseball, and I want you to think about this, I want you to think hard about this. When did baseball really become something that, I mean, you always loved it when you were younger, but when did you really start to focus on working hard to, to be the best you can be? Like, when did you kind of think like, okay, I have a vision of where I want to go and now I have to take steps to get there. Brendan, what do you, what, when did that kind of happen for you? Um, well, I've always kind of just like loved baseball. I love playing. I always did lessons and everything, but I would really think I started um, working a lot harder at it when I was probably 14 or 15. It was like right before, um, it was like right around my sophomore year. Right. Like I knew um, I knew that year that there was a spot on the varsity team that uh, I could take in the infield. So I remember like, the st- summer after my freshman year, fall of my sophomore year, and, and winter of my uh, sophomore year, I really started, you know, getting in the weight room, gaining weight, and just building my body to make sure I'm a, I was a varsity level player because I was always a pretty good baseball player, but I used to be like really, really skinny, really not strong. Right. And I think one of the biggest things in uh, in developing as a player is getting physical and, and getting and getting a lot stronger so you hit the ball harder and run faster throw harder all that stuff I, that really helps especially if you have a good swing have good fielding mechanics and, and can pitch as well so what kind of what got you into that like what made you realize like wow it's so it's the summer after your freshman year uh fall of your sophomore year what made you realize like man i really gotta i really gotta start working hard because sometimes like players know they're supposed to work hard but they don't really know what to do or where to start so just kind of talk about like what made you start and and how and and what did you start doing I think um the biggest thing was just setting a goal for myself that I'm always working towards like my goal around then was to make the varsity team by you know spring of my sophomore year so you know I've Every day, I would just, I would just be like, you know, I'm gonna make this happen. So yeah, um, yeah, it's kind of just, it's just having a goal and working towards it. Like that year, my goal was to, was to make the varsity team start. So it's kind of just like what motivated, motivated me every day to really like, you know, develop as a player. Gotcha, Connor. What about you? When did it start? for you did it start around 14 like it did for brendan or did it start earlier or when did it start for you um it's a good question so obviously you said um earlier when you're playing baseball at a young age you kind of just you play yeah and it probably started for me right around COVID. my dad um i tell this story a lot my dad sat me down at the table right when the COVID shutdown happened and he was like hey like don't get comfortable like figure out what you're gonna do get better at it and from that day on Everything kind of just, I set a plan um, that night. And the day after, I was like, hey, I'm going to set goals out for every month. And immediately just bought into everything. And even still, every single day, kind of waking up and falling in love with the game all over again, getting the privilege to play this game that I've been playing since I was four years old every single day. And just immediately falling back in love with it. And Tying back to that conversation that I had with my dad, kind of realizing how much this game really meant to me and how much I want to like play it and make it. And I feel like you just learn so much day in and day out, even like in today's day and age, you're just learning from a different people, different experiences. And it's, you can't really, you can't really change it. You can't really match it. Yeah. So you said something interesting, like you just, when you're younger, you just kind of, play it and for you it was a conversation with your dad that kind of changed it from like I'm just out here playing and having fun which is always going to be fun right anytime you're playing baseball it's fun but when you get to the high school level and beyond and if you're a serious baseball player there is a a an element of fun to it but it's a different kind of fun because you're working towards 
being something, right? Yeah. So like Brendan had started at 14, Connor, it was right around COVID for you, which I think is kind of a, about yeah. that age. Yeah. And Connor, what did you start doing? Like I've, I've always tried to impress upon my players, anybody that I work with, is when you leave your instructor, when you leave practice, you're really not going to get any better unless you're doing work on your own. And I've always told you guys, um, Connor, and talking to you about it, I know you've done it, Brendan, I'm not sure about you, but like when you leave a pitching lesson, go home and do drills in front of the mirror, um, do drills uh, whenever you can. And I, I give you a list of drills to do. When did you start doing that kind of stuff? Like when did you start doing that on your own and what did you start doing? So we had this fall league when we were in seventh grade and we had a, it was a rainy day and we had practice um, and it got canceled. And our coach at the time said, Hey, we're going to go to a, a gym. Uh, it's near where I work. And I know the owner, we're going to go to this gym. And I was like, I don't understand this. Like I was a seventh grade kid. I, I wanted to go home and play video games or something. Right. Go eat like chips, Ahoy cookies. Right. So we got there and I was like, ah, this is like, I, I was so sore the next morning. I couldn't even walk. And I feel like we kept going to this place because um, it was good. I didn't really see it, how beneficial it was at the time. And over the years, over the course of the years, I kept buying into it because at the start, I was just going through the motions and not really putting any understanding into what I was doing. Right. And I feel like as I kept doing it and progressing and seeing, oh, wow, like I, I never hit a ball that far. I never threw a ball that fast. I've never done this, done that. Like I've never – just seeing seeing things progress i was like all right this is kind of cool like but you got to see the product of like wow if you work really hard you're going to end up being better on the field which you never really experienced before that and that was just going through the motions and then kind of leveling up and going to a whole another thing we're actually putting understanding to what you're doing and setting a plan and figuring out what you have to do to get from point a to point b is that's where the change is made. And that's where you kind of see that next jump. Now, Brendan, what about you? I mean, do you have like a, a T set up in your house? Did you, did you throw a ball against the wall to work on your fielding technique or did you do any sort of pitching drills in front of a mirror? What kind of stuff did you do as a 14 year old? Well, and we're talking about after you decided after the summer of your, your freshman year into the fall of your sophomore year, like what kind of stuff, did you start doing at your house to really kick your game up to the next level? Well, the thing is, I think around that it was right around quarantine. And I think it was huge for me because, you know, you'd wake up in that spring and the summertime, you do school for like an hour maybe. And then like, and then, uh, you know, me and Connor and all the rest of our friends, we just go to the field for hours and hours. So right. it, it was so much, it was so much fun. I loved doing it. Right. I would do anything to be back in that. We would literally do it an on, online school. You do an assignment, either do them by the end of the week, do it all in one day. And we go to the baseball field till like five o'clock. Yeah. So like, I think that needs to happen more often with kids like at, at that age, just to go out and play without any adults around. Cause I feel like you learn how to, you know, if you're a pitcher, you learn how to tinker with different grips and you're not worried about success or failure. You're just going out and having fun as a hitter. You're, you're, you know, you're, you're working on stuff where you don't even know that you're working on it. You're maybe you're working on going to the opposite field. Maybe you're working on hitting a curveball within the course of a game. You don't even know you're working on this stuff and you're doing it without the pressure of an adult looking over your shoulder. You know, that's really cool that you guys went out. I didn't know you guys did that, that you guys went out and you made the best of a really terrible situation. So that's really cool that you guys did that. But Brendan, going back to you, like, so you're talking about quarantine. What kind of stuff did you end up doing on your own? Yeah, because what I'm what I'm envisioning is like, and I wish somebody told me this as like a, a high school kid. I had no idea. Like, I wish somebody told me, hey, when you're sitting upstairs and watching TV, take five or 10 minutes, get out of the chair, go downstairs and do something baseball related for those five or 10 or 15 minutes, and then go back upstairs and can continue to do what you're doing. What kind of stuff did you do anything like that or no? What, what, what did you do at home to kind of make yourself a better baseball player? Yeah, like around that time, I would just wake up, do school. And as soon as I was finished, I would like, I had a tea set up in my house. So I would go just 
hit balls off the tee. And I told myself I'd do like two or three buckets at a time. And we'd like go to the field, get my defense, my throwing and stuff, and then come back to the house and just do like more tee work. And um, and the thing is, like after I started doing it for a while, I learned to like like it. I like to work hard and, and do all this extra stuff. I didn't mind it. So I think once you get to like that point, that's when you really start to like see results. Just like doing all these things on your own, like hitting when no one's watching, um, getting your dry reps on defense, like throwing the ball against the wall. Like I did that a lot. Yeah. And yeah, that kind of stuff. That's really cool because what I've learned as a coach is, and I've I've tried to impress this, impress upon, impress this upon my players is like, it's not necessarily about the destination, right? It's not about just making it to play division one baseball where you find a lot more of the fun is in the journey, which is basically what you just said. Like you learned how to enjoy working really hard and you learned how to appreciate the journey, not just like, well, because if you just looked at the destination, you said, well, my goal is to play division one baseball. Well, once you get to, once you achieve your goal, it's like, well, then what, Yeah. you know, now you've achieved your goal of playing division one baseball. You know, you're a, um, an established varsity baseball player. You still have to find the joy in the hard work. I think that's what, anybody can find the joy in when they get older is, you know, it's like, okay, well, I want to make a lot of money. I'm going off on a tangent here, but I want to make a lot of money. Okay. Well, what happens when you make money? Then what, you know, you have to enjoy the journey along the way. So Connor, do you agree with that? Does that kind of resonate with you that, that, you know, you, you, you really found a lot of joy in the hard work along the way. I was like kind of obsessed with this at, at a point we were getting our floors done. In our house during COVID, we had to take everything out of the house. My parents went down the shore, and I went and stayed at my aunt's house. I brought my weights because I was lifting in my basement. I brought my weights, and I'm, I set up a bow net in their backyard. I was staying there for three days. And, I, like, it was literally my coffee in the morning. I had to do schoolwork, and then it was just baseball. And you really have to, like, you have to enjoy what you're doing because if you're not enjoying it, you're just gonna you're just gonna be bored to death, and it's just gonna be useless reps. Have you guys ever? Um, and I'll I'll turn it to you, Brendan. Um, have you ever like had days along the way? And the yeah, the answer should probably be yes. I would imagine everyone has these days where like you don't feel like doing it, but then you make yourself do it anyway. Have you ever had those days, Brendan, or is it just kind of like you always feel like doing it? Yeah, definitely. Like, like back then, probably when I was like freshman sophomore i would have those days and then just like not do anything yeah and you know like no matter how um no matter how far you get like no matter how old you are like you're gonna have those days where you just feel like you don't want to do anything and i feel like at this point i'm better now at at you know like going and getting my work in no matter what just because like there's nothing else to do like i don't want to just sit around so, right you know i just I just, I just feel, feel better when I get to do that stuff, even if I'm not, you know, feeling up to it. So, yeah, you get a sense of satisfaction. Yeah. And you did it, even if you, you, it wasn't your best workout, which not every workout is meant to be your best workout. You're going to have right. some crappy workouts along the way. And if every workout is the best workout you've ever done, it's then chances easy. are you're not working hard enough. And Connor, you have I, you and I have talked about that, like yeah, with the, the, rule, the rule of thirds, right? It's like, you know, you're, you're achieving, you're, you're chasing a dream. And I think I saw this on, you know, some social media website, whatever platform, whatever. And it's like, if you're chasing a dream, a third of the workouts are going to be great. A third of them are going to be okay. And a third of them are going to be really crappy. Right. And, and if you're, if you're somewhere in that ratio, then chances are you're, you're working hard enough towards your dream. But anyway, Connor, what I wanted to ask you about, I wanted, I wanted you to tell whoever's going to listen to this. I wanted you to tell them about how you would go to the bathroom in, in school oh. and, and uh, do pitching drills in front of the mirror. Talk He's to done the same about. thing. I, I've caught him in class doing like, <laughs> no. It, yeah. Like, you don't realize I'll just, just like stand there for a wall, like, like pretend to do it. And just, no, like, I don't realize what I'm doing. And then some people will just be like, dude, like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> I, 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 was in, I was in the YMCA with my headphones in, like dancing around like an idiot. And it was yesterday. 
Oh, it was no, it was this was last year. And I picked yeah, I did it yesterday too. But I picked up my leg and did like a motion. I kicked some dude in the head. <laughs> and he was like, dude, what are you doing? I was like, God. But like, no, it's if there's a mirror around there, if I'm just like if I just feel the need, like I'm doing it. I'm I'm throwing a ball and I know it looks weird, but like it I like I love doing it. But you don't care. Yeah, so that's that's I, the other thing. That's the other thing too, is that. A lot of times, and I learned this in college, because when I was in college, and I told both of you guys this, I'm sure, I would kind of do the same thing. And I was, I started to be obsessed with feeling really good when I was on the mound. And I loved the feeling of looking at the catcher's glove and knowing exactly what I needed it to do to get there. And if I missed the spot, I loved knowing exactly what I did wrong, and then exactly what I needed to do to fix it. And I felt like the, the gap that I had to bridge was just doing my motion over and over and over and over again. So I felt that comfort on the mound in pressure situations in games. And I started doing that in my dorm room and guys would walk in see, seeing me do it. And I remember feeling a little embarrassed and I'd have to deal with getting made fun of a little bit. But ultimately, I didn't care. Like, I didn't care if people made fun of me for doing drills. If I felt like it was helping me be a better player, I would just do it. And it sounds like you guys feel the same way about doing that stuff, right? I set up something in my house when I was like seven years old on our glass door. Um, and like a clear glass door. And it's, right. I put duct tape right in our living room of a strike zone. And I would throw like this big, like squishy ball like in our kitchen, like that's into our awesome. dining room. And it's just, and it's, that's probably where I got it from. Just, that's awesome. Yeah. Do you do anything like that, at, like that at home, Brendan, or no? Uh, I never set up tape and pretended to. I have it in my basement right now. But yeah, I don't really know. I have it in my basement right now. I have a mound in my basement. It's a yeah. duct tape mound in a, in a, a strike zone. So Brendan's a little bit less of a nerd than Connor is. That will yeah, a little bit less of exactly. a psycho. Gotcha. Um, all right. So talk about what you do. Oh, it says your meeting will end in 10 minutes. Um, all right. So I feel like we just got started. That's weird. I, th I thought I did an hour. Anyway, we might have to like do a part one and part two. We'll probably end up having to do that. Um, so in a few minutes, we'll be done and then we'll go to part two. So um what was I going to say that completely threw me off? Uh, oh, what do you guys, uh, Connor, we'll start with you. What do you guys do now? Like, what is your week look like in terms of like weight room stuff, individual drill work, lessons? Like, what is your, what is a normal Monday through Sunday? Like, what is a normal week for you? So to be honest with you, it varies from week to week for me. I will sit down on Sundays and book it down to the minute because I found in September that time management is like a very crucial thing for me. Like I'll take you through a, a normal week, but it varies from week to week. Okay. Like a week like this with, I'll do one with, with school and with no school. Okay. So with no school, it's basically get up first thing. I'll probably eat, um, work out. And then depending on what day it is throwing wise, I'll probably throw 90 feet. And then I'll take tomorrow off from throwing. I'll lift. Um, I'll probably do a light conditioning Wednesday, um, lift again. And then uh, like a light catch, um, depending on where you're at. Just I'll, I'll throw like three times a week. Okay. Thursday, um, a lot of running. I condition a lot on Thursdays. Okay. Um, and I don't lift Thursdays. Fridays is probably one of my biggest lifts. Um, I try and do Monday, Fridays for my heaviest lifts. And then Saturdays we throw um, right. we the bullpens. Right. And Sundays is basically touch and feel. Okay. Sundays is, you know, if I have, if I feel like kind of crappy, kind of sore, I'll do a, a like a recovery run and go in the sauna at our Y. No, that's good. And that was. So it seems like out of the seven days, you're doing something baseball related, probably three of those days. And then 
you're you're working out almost every single day during the yeah week. usually usually back. five days gotcha um and where are you working out you work out at the annex right yeah the annex and our, our ymca but the gotcha. thing that i picked up in september ish was i had a, i had a job i was a coach i was a club i was a club baseball coach yeah and i i would have practices from four to nine o'clock at night and i was like i have no time to lift so i was like i gotta get up before school and get this done I have to do this. Like, this is, it's going to yeah. be tough. So I'll literally go to bed at eight o'clock at night. Yeah. And I would get home at like seven o'clock and just basically time management is, was the biggest thing for me. Like I, there was really no room for air. Yeah. I would sit down on my Sundays for a good 30 minutes and map out my schedule day to day to day. And I'm probably leaving a lot of things out. No, just, that's fine. I think, I think what, what, whoever's going to listen to this needs to hear is how you make it a priority to do all this stuff. And you're not waiting for a coach to tell you now, Connor, make sure you're getting into the gym, Connor, make sure you're doing this and doing that. Um, you're making this a priority within your daily life. Brendan, is that something, is it a similar week for you? Um, yeah, it's, it's a little bit different because you know, I have to get in my pin and everything. So, right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that right. later, Connor. As Connor this has dreams of hitting this year, but go ahead, Brent. Yeah. Um, so, I lift probably four, sometimes five times in a week. Um, on Monday, I'll do a lower body day. Tuesday, I'll go um, upper body. Wednesday, it's kind of different now just because it's the winter, but in the fall when I wasn't playing, well, like when um after like the season, the fall season ended, I would go do um fielding lessons. So right. I would go do a fielding workout. And um, where did you get the fielding lessons? Who was doing them for you? It was Coach Lou Cologne at okay. uh, FU Madison. Gotcha. So for, he has a big, uh, big following. He does great work. So for any young yeah. player, uh, look up Lou Cologne, uh, C O L O N. Um, and that's a great guy to do fielding lessons with, but go ahead, Brent. Yeah. And then Thursday I would have a hitting session and a lift. So I would usually go to the hitting session first and then lift at the wire after, um, Friday I'd do another upper body day and then Saturday was stretch and recovery. And it's a little bit harder now, um, now that it's winter because it's, um, colder outside so it's harder to get swings you can really only do it in indoor places because they took down the cages in the town yeah, kind of yeah. yeah. this is the stupidest thing ever yeah i don't really care if it's cold out like if the cage up i'll go but they're not up so yeah yeah but like in the fall i would you know i lift on mondays and then go hit right after tuesday same thing wednesday i didn't lift and i would do my feeling stuff thursday i was hitting friday i was hitting and the weekends I was hitting, so. Right, so you're, it's it's something that's constantly on your mind. You're yeah. constantly figuring out, um, you know, what what you need to do from a physical perspective, what you need to do from a, a fundamental perspective. And it's something that is a priority for you and something that sounds like, you know, you might have a day here or there where you don't feel like doing it, but it sounds like for the most part, you've found a lot of joy in the hard work and in, in, in the hard work that comes along with baseball. And I think that you've seen your hard work translate into success on the field. And in a lot of ways, that's very addictive. Am I right? You get addicted to the success. Can you talk about that, Connor? Like, like, have you seen a direct correlation from the hard work you put in to the success on the field? Yeah. I mean, um, my sophomore year, I was prepared, I thought. Yeah. Um, I hit a number that I wanted to hit, and I thought I was prepared. And I basically realized that I got into the season. I was like, okay, I'm prepared, but I wasn't, like, mentally prepared. Right. Um, with that being said, it was crappier. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, yeah. Put it, we'll put it at that. And that summer, I had – I, I pitched pretty good, not not great, and I was just start after start after start. I was like, okay, I just need to be better than this start. I need to be better than this start, and just keep climbing, keep climbing, and not be taking steps backwards. 
And with what you said about being addicted to success, there was literally just trying to be better than my last start, be better, be better. And just trying to do everything. I would watch over all of my starts two or three times during the week, right? Like every single pitch and just break down what I did just wrong and how I can and make sure I don't do the same thing. Um, which again, pitching is tough. It's, yeah. you can't, you can't make the adjustment absolutely right away and be like, Oh, I'm, I'm, I got it now. Like we said, an inch takes a long time. Yeah. Um, but just buying into the whole idea of it was probably the biggest thing for me and gotcha. just being kind of fully aware of what you're doing and just figuring out what you need to do to get to that next step and kind of level up. All right. So listen, we're going to stop now, but can you guys stick around and do a part two? Yeah. We have about a minute and a half left and then we'll try to condense everything that we not that I want to talk about with you guys in the next part two to a, a half hour. So whoever's going to listen to this can buckle up for about an hour total. And, and hopefully, you know, everyone finds this helpful, but I've had, I've had fun so far. Um, I'm going to sign off now and then I'm going to send you guys uh, a new link and then we can get going for part two. Sound good. Sweet. All, right. All right. Thanks guys. I'll talk to you in a minute. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah.